Hi, welcome to a run through of my Dandy and Beano books. I suppose there's a bit of Beezer, I think, in there somewhere. So let's just go through it. Now, all these books I've picked up from various places, Amazon obviously, some from local Oxfam or Demelza. And this one, the Dandy book, a really lovely old one. Unfortunately, sometimes when you get these ones, unless you go and look online and find exactly the right cover, they never put dates. Now, this one's falling to pieces. You can see there, the Dandy book. And you've got DC Thompson, of course, and it's got baggy pants. <laughs> lots of different stories. Lots of, obviously, almost 90% of these, or 99%, all these stories have gone. And some of the pages, perhaps, <laughs> can't particularly show. But still, you've got some very dramatic artwork all the way through it. It's a really good book. Like, Twisted Foot. I know that one is. Charlie the Chimp. So you've got Charlie the Chimp there. Now, many of these characters I really have little knowledge of. I wasn't a mega dandy or Beano fan. So this annual and the other annuals about really my only source. I mean, I picked them up. I would go through them, but I wasn't. I was more a Marvel and DC fan. <laughs> That's what I was. And you've got this one, Shaggy Dog story there, obviously. But the art was still pretty good. I don't know all the, the artists, of course. Sometimes certain people will put comments saying that artist is XYZ. I'm not familiar with the artist, but I still love these sort of books. It's great picking up a lovely, I don't know, 1950s, probably early 1950s. It looks that sort of period, but I can't say. So someone will turn around and say, no, it's from 1954. Here's another one that's probably a bit later, I would assume. It's falling to pieces as I just pick it up, actually. You can see, obviously, there, someone's put some tape there. It's actually not too bad. But this one also was from Demelza as well. This book belongs to, and unfortunately, they still didn't put the date. But this one's, of course, the Beano. And, of course, it's got more more familiar characters. Obviously, that one's got Desperate Dan on the back. But this one, Roger the Dodger. I always remember those. Hooky Buston book. <laughs> I must admit, wasn't familiar with that. But quite often with a lot of these ones, and which is quite unusual, is the style I did it. So you've got the illustration there. And, of course, you've got the text below. That was a very... And, of course, even tech stories as well. This one, warning to all readers, don't believe a word of this story. Oh, well, I won't. Minnie the Minx, of course, reasonably well known. I think she's still going. I'm quite certain Minnie the Minx is still going. Now, I don't know if, and there's Roger the Dodger again. There's Dennis the Menace in here somewhere. I'm, maybe he came in a little later. You've got Little Plum. I remember Little Plum as well. So you've got lots of little stories there. Cat and Canary. Not familiar with that one. But it's, I think it's quite good. The Green Shadow of Sherwood. So obviously you've got a lovely Robin Hood story there as well. Oh, there is Dennis the Menace. Actually, Dennis the Menace looks quite fairly different, obviously, from the way Dennis the Menace is now. And, of course, Desperate Dan's on the back there as well. That's strange. The dandy book there, and also on the back of the Beano one. Was it both? I have no idea. That says my, shows my knowledge of all the characters. But still, Beano and Dandy. This one, there's a series of these books, and they did a really nice job. I think these ones, and they reasonably priced about 10 pounds sometimes i've seen some five or six pounds and this one's a 70s selection these are more ones that i'm familiar with the 70s ones but i think all of the characters in here i'm familiar with and also look like the way i remember them obviously dennis the menace so you got there and nasha and the jocks and Geordies. i must admit i'm not familiar with that one i love this one here the 70s fashion and they really did a nice job going through this book but the only criticism i would have of the book is that they don't put the dates Sometimes you get some of these books where they put the date and it's, it's not very precise. It says 1981 and you think, hmm, OK. And then another comic, another story, it's a little bit later. And you think, is that also 1981? It doesn't have any, unfortunately, the actual date. It would have been really nice. You've got here, obviously, Dennis the Menace and Nasha again. I'm always going to say Ganasha, but it's Nasha. Also this one, the Nibblers, Mr. Bunkerton's Highland Games and many others. But it also gives lots of also information as well here. Par, Par Bear was out for scouting for Grub one day in 1972. Obviously, that dates it. And also, only in the Beano would it got a dog that understands how to operate a radio-controlled canine. Of course. But I love these ones as well, the Q-Bikes. That was a great little story. They were, uh, and also that one, I remember that one, Admiral Jumbo. And there was one before that. Let's have a look. Oh, Three Bears, Dennis the Menace, of course. No, that's and also they've got lots of obviously black and white, so not all of it is colour. But again, would have been nice if they'd included some uh, dated information so you could put it in context when it was. But it's still a really good book. 
the Smasher as well included there. But I got a few of these. So this one is another one. This is Comics in the Classroom. They did a lot of these themed ones. Comics in this and Comics in the Disco. <laughs> there, was, there was quite a few. In fact, it actually got so co confusing when you actually go through them. You think, have I got that one? And I did buy a couple twice by accident. I thought, oh no, I've already got. Because of the way the titles were shown. But still, this one's got fascinating. Oh, it's got a little bit of a... There. You've got the contents there. And again, I don't think it particularly includes much information about the dates. So you've got this one, Hookie's Magic Bowler Hat. Now, actually, that looks quite good, actually. <laughs> Very unusual one. And again, they did the story. And you had the text below, as well as, of course, the balloons and the, the panels. Uh, Jimmy's grandfather. That's very strange. Jimmy's pocket grandfa grandpa. Well, his grandfather there, and then grandpa later. How weird. Piece of pocket grandpa again. They've got there. That's obviously, that was a big story there. Billy Butter, the brainy goat. <laughs> okay, I'm certain that was, but again, black and white, obviously 1940s, I guess, Corky the Cat, of course, you've got that story there, Dennis the Menace, you've got Dennis the Menace, and actually this one's a nice one, because it actually looks like it's an actual page of the artwork, which is quite good, not from the comic, Lord Snooty, and you've got Winker Watson, Winker Watson again, game characters, I remember Winker Watson just about, uh, Bash Street Kids, of course, I love the Bash Street Kids, they were great, Always as a poor teacher. Always felt quite sorry for him. Desperate Dan as well, of course. And a nice little book. This one is Comics in the Classroom. So it's obviously all context of school. And, well, that one, fun shine, fun, fun shine, fun shine and laughter. It's the summer specials. I don't know if they're summer specials, but the ones all set the summer theme. They're quite possible, the 60-year one. And I think there was lots in the 60-year one. I don't know if they're going to do a 70 or 80 or 90-year one. Maybe they will be doing those. Maybe they'll include... Because quite often I go into WH Smith's, pick up the summer special. Not always buying them, but I do pick them up and quickly flick through them. And they do run through lots of old stories from the 1950s and 1960s, which are quite, you know, really nice. But I think that these must be aiming for not young kids, I wouldn't have thought. So it's more likely, I thought, older people obviously are looking. And it would be nice just to see the dates again. It seems a pity that they just didn't include more information. But some they do. Yeah, you've got some that says here, 1983, Dandy Beach. Dandy Beach, 1980. But sometimes it's not particularly clear which one is which. So you've got here, 1968, Beano Beach. Also you've got Topper as well. Some summer special. So they included other comics. Beryl the, Beryl the Peril, of course. And also Smasher again, and I thought maybe these characters must have turned up in different comics. Bully Beef and Chips, Banana Bunch, uh, oh, there's enough one, Bash Street Kids, Postcard Parade. So you've got a game. I love these summer specials. Summer specials were always my favourite. And I probably did buy a few of the Beano ones, Topper, all those summer specials. Can't remember the actual issues, but I'm certain I did buy quite a lot of them. It also includes like this, Twinkle, summer special. And unfortunately, it doesn't actually... Oh, 1979 does give a bit of date there. Many of the Minks. You've also got the Four Marys there. Another story, obviously, they've included. I don't know what that was from. Let's have a look. Can't remember. Oh, you've got Patty Mason, the fashion model. Lorna Drake, Secret Dance. Oh, that was Bunty for Girls. So they included some other comics as well, which is really nice. And obviously, more later style. So that's the fun... Funshine, very unusual way of saying it, but sunshine, obviously. Beano and Dante, Winter Games. So now we've got Golden Age classic comics. So another sort of unusual one. Again, combining lots of very cold, Christmassy sort of themed ones. I think, I think I've got a Christmas one. This one, obviously, probably is another set of Christmas ones. So you've got Big Head and Thick Head, The Bash Street Kids, 1982, from the Beano. And lots and lots of other stories. And the artwork is really, really good. And the, I think the quality is very nice as well. Very sharp, very decent. So you can see that when the bells ring, many of the minks, winter funshine. They love that word, funshine. Whiz as well. And Little Plum and many, many others. Must admit, I'm not so what's your name? When it's the, the winter games ones, the cold winter, I think. Oh, but Christmas, I love Christmas. But not so much the snow. Associated with Christmas, but this one's an amazing book. Classic comic covers, and now this does obviously include the dates, obviously not at the bottom, which would have been nice, but of course, they do include it anyway. Because, of course, you've got details like this 
Yeah, so it's 1941, December 6th. So this one is just a really nice one. Classic comic covers, 1937 to 1988. You've got the Beano there, obviously Beano. And there are some Christmas ones in this one as well. Happy Easter ones, of course. They obviously went for Easter there. You've got the fireworks ones there. November the 2nd. It was all oh, very weird, sort of warped, sort of unusual Photoshop-like style. <laughs> you got Beano then, uh, this one's 1971, again sort of the period probably I was reading Beano occasionally, Biffo the Bear, and it was still Biffo the Bear at that point. Of course Dennis the Menace took over, and there is, that one's 1977, maybe it was a sharing. Oh, Christmas Beano, and again you've got one there, an actual page, which is very nice, Biffo the Bear, which I think is quite a lovely inclusion. Corky the Cat, of course Dandy 1939, so these are just lovely covers. Obviously the comics, they weren't actually very thick actually, but obviously because it was wartime, sometimes some of these comics were about eight or, that was it, pages. Some very, very thin books. This one's favourites from the 40s. Again, obviously most of the characters, I'm certain some have survived, but very few haven't. This one was obviously a very big one at the time, Big Ego. So favourites from the 40s. I think it was a favourites from the 50s, favourites in the 60s, etc. Weirdly, I haven't got the one from the 60s. So I don't know why I haven't got that one. But this one is another one of these unusual stories. They've got here the horse that Jack built. You've got obviously some stories there. You've got Entertainment Keyhole Kate in the Dandy production. What's this one here? You've got obviously Corky the Cat. Radio programmes of the 40s entertaining youngsters. I don't think that was from the 40s in any shape or form. But still, this is just a great little book with all these sort of classic tales this one, Hair Oil Hal. wonder if any of these characters ever come back and you think that they could bring, I mean, there's nothing, haircut. <laughs> Transport as well, obviously they would have to do a bit, a few bits of challenges there. Uh, Multi the Millionaire. They have to be called something else, wouldn't it? The Billionaire, I suppose, nowadays. Or Trillionaire. They'd have to go for Trillionaire. Tilly the Trillionaire or Tessie the Trillionaire or whoever. Tony the Trillionaire. I don't know, who knows? But still, look great stories there, all from the 1940s. And these are quite decent books, nice, full of colour, really worth checking out. This one, again, they did quite a few that were sort of like hard to work out, a theme particularly. You've got the history of fun. <laughs> that covers everything. I mean, aren't they all supposed to be fun? It wasn't the history of despair or the history of really horrible things. Most of the time, of course, it was always a teacher or something that had problems, of course. So I don't know if it was fun for the, the teachers always. But you've got the characters, obviously. Here and again, oh, it does say 1970 there. So it does at least give a date. Sometimes it does, 1974. So I'm, I'm wrong when I say they don't, they're not all sort of without dates. So you've got that. You've got Smasher again, or Smasher again. So you've got another story. Some of the characters look very similar to some of the characters. That, quite often you look at the characters and you think, oh, you know what, that guy there, Smasher. I mean, who does he remind you of? Looks a bit like a certain Dennis the Menace. I definitely think it's a resemblance to Dennis the Menace. Also, you've got Years to Remember, 1492. Of course, that's an early copy of Dan Dimbino. And of course, they obviously include, and that's a really good bit of artwork there. Absolutely lovely. You know, they obviously included these sort of wonderful educational articles as well. And, uh, well, saying that with a little uh, plum there. Very young. Years to Remember, 1588. That's a real nice one as well. Wow. Jonah, the ye ancient mariner. And also you've got wild young Durkee. Spy hunt through the streets of Perth. All pretty good stuff. These pages are from the topper of oh, 1959. I don't know why they called it Beano and Dandy when sometimes you go through this and you think, hang, it says topper. There's probably some stories from uh, Twinkle in there. I would have thought. Oh, giants, uh, some Winston Churchill. And again, another one from Sparky, this one. This is old Lord Snooty, the next one. You've got Sign of the Times, but there's no sign of them now. I don't know. It's got, obviously got examples there. Biffo. Then Focus on the 50s. Another one is Focus on... And I like that scene more than probably the fun ones, because the fun ones, yeah, fine. But sometimes it's a bit sort of... At least the school one, you've got a very... Obviously, maybe they could have done like a countryside, or at the, obviously did the seaside one. Maybe they, there must be another ones. There must be other themes that they could have run you know, mechanical inventions or so. A bit hard to work a title for that one out. But still, again, you've got, oh, so Dennis the Menace, again, was actually all the way back in 1950s. 
That's strange. Wow, didn't realize he was that far back. A bit further there, of course, he was at the cover most of the covers. Was he desperate down again? Shaggy Dog, Doggy, Hungry Horace. Obviously, some more. They used a lot of red, they love a lot of red and black. Obviously, very popular colors. Also, you've got Red Roger the Dodger as well. So, that's the 1950s ones, and they've also got all oh, got the annuals on the back, which is quite nice as well. I wonder if they've got all of them. Looks about 10 there. So, obviously, one for each year. This is a more recent one. The Celebration of Dudley D. Watkins. A selection of cartoon strips from one of DC Thompson's foremost creators. And this, this has got some lovely ones. Absolutely beautiful, you can see. Without any of the, the colour to distract, you've got here the Wandering Willie, the Willie Explorer. Don't ask me. Lord Snooty and his pals, Persevere. <laughs> Great titles. Jimmy's Magic Patch. What from, oh, Magic Patch. You, uh, <laughs> great little story there the paraffin oil plot apparently you've got more Lord Snooty Desperate Dan you've got Master Gangster of Dismal Swamp just great so I can't imagine that being a real winner nowadays Lord Snooty again Lord Snooty must I remember the Lord Snooty's those were ones that when I went around to my nans they, I had loads of these old books and things and they quite often had like Lord Snooty and things you think oh you know, they must have been from the 1940s, 1950s. And I didn't, you know, particularly know anything about the Beanos and Dandies particularly. I wasn't buying them. I don't know what I was buying that time. I think it was like TV comic. And that was my probably earliest memories of buying comics was TV comic. But Ginger. Remember that one? Ginger there. And Mickey. I don't know, David. Obviously David and Goliath. You've obviously got a nice historical story there. So that's the Dudley Watkins. You should be able to get this one, I would have thought. I only bought this fairly recently, so uh, it might be still readily available. I think all these are reasonably available. I don't think they're, they're tricky to get. This one's another one that I love because it's Christmas. Christmas, I love anything Christmas ones. Any, I've got stacks of books, Christmas ones. I will be doing a, a long Christmas one one time because I've got so many books. The Beano, Beano comic. And of course, it's got lots of covers. Of course, the covers were quite often the main thing. You would have the, sometimes the stories would be Christmassy inside and the Beano and Dandy at least were. Sometimes you get comics and you get the cover and it'd be Christmassy and then you open it up inside and the stories weren't particularly that Christmassy. But the covers were, or the back cover might be. But again, you've got another Beano one. I love the way they did that sort of split there. That's quite nice. Just lovely with, obviously, projector there. And that one was 1954. The Tricks of Screwy Driver. They obviously went for lots of Harry Dan Matickles. They really went, they must have had thousands of characters. Absolutely thousands of characters. Corky the Cat, Corporal Clot. Remember Corporal Clot? Don't know when that game, unfortunately, that's, don't, don't date it sometimes. So you've got Corporal Clot, you've got Sound the Alarm, etc., etc. Also, oh, another cover, which is always good. Let's Pretend, Designer Dan, Tin, can't work that, no idea. Keyhole Kate. Remember Keyhole Kate, Pup Parade, and so on. Lots and lots. Tom, Dick, Sally, Desperate Dan again. Lots of great little stories. They're always, of course, revolving around food. There's always a massive amount, probably in this case, uh, making up the batter there. Oh, and it gets caught in the wind, of course. Always the way, Wonder Boy. Jimmy and his Magic Patch. Obviously a popular story that one was, but a lovely Christmas book. Comics at Christmas. This one's great as well. Great stories from the first 50 years. So another one there. 179, obviously I bought it in Octofan. And this one, so you've got there, all the load, again, lots of characters I'm not particularly familiar with. And you've got these, the adventure stories. And they did it in this style, very, very unusual style now. Obviously comics, I don't go for that style now. But it's still in any shape or form. I don't think I've ever seen a modern comic go for that sort of, I think it, was, it would be nice to see it done again. Maybe done in a different way. But, who knows? Maybe it's too old-fashioned, I guess. Crack away, Jack. Looks very dramatic there, doesn't it? Absolutely. Sudden. And again, it doesn't give, unfortunately, any date. This one, it? Dandy Superstar Vehicle. The early years. You've got Terrible Task for the Seventh Son. So you've got lots and lots of these stories. Jack the Dragon Girl. A lot of these stories, I think, would be great to see reprinted. Because obviously in here, they just include a little bit. But some of these, the Strang the Terrible. Great stuff. You've got Little White Sheaf of the Cherokee, uh, Cherokees. <laughs> got, got that wrong. Bonnie Prince Charlie. I mean, that looks pretty good as well. Red Rory. 
Oh, there's loads and loads of the shipwrecked circus. Great little stories all the way through. It's obviously there's great stories. I don't know how many stories there are, but crack away, Jack again. You've got adventures, ventures. From the golden years, it says there. Beware of the mine. And so on. So that's this book. This one is the great stories from the first 50 years. And finally, after all that, 101 great stories. So I guess there's 101 great stories in it. Again, Biffo the Bear, Desperate Dan, and also Dennis the Menace, Dennis the Mascot, apparently. Anyway, so we've got Dennis the Menace there, the Three Bears, the Little Plum. you got all the old favourites. But again, unfortunately, no deep. It would be nice to have down the bottom if they put like 1951, 55 or something. And then, of course, you could see how it changed as well because you've got Dennis the Menace here. Now, that one looks quite an early one. And I don't know, it says 35 to 36. I'm not certain. Oh, this one's got the 101 Great Annuals. So it's obviously got the Monster Comic one there at the top. You've got the Beano book, Dandy Monster Comic, the Magic Beano book. Dennis the Menace 1970. Obviously, it's not in order, then that gives a big clue. And you've got another page of all these covers. That's pretty good. 1969, Bash Street Kids. Wow, they have one. 1986, Dennis the Menace, Dandy, Beano, Bash Street. Oh, Magic Beano book, obviously, down there with Ego. Also, Dandy book. Wow, so that's quite a nice little inclusion of those covers. Roger the Dodger and many, many others. Little Plum and Prince Whoopi. So that's a run through of these Dandy and Beanos. Well, I hope you found this of interest. So a run through of all these Beano and Dandy books. There are a, quite a lot of other books that I haven't got. Sometimes they were a bit more expensive and I just didn't buy them. Or they were on subjects that I wasn't particularly interested in buying. So uh, I hope you found this of interest. It'll be, no, be great to hear from you. Do you buy the Beano? Do you buy the Dandy? Do you still get them? Also, have you got many of these books? And do you know of any others? Some that are even better than the ones that are included here. And do you know if they're going to bring out other volumes of these sort of large sort of Beano books? It'd be great to see, or and Dandy, of course, it'd be great to see many more of these sort of starred books. Anyway, bye.